In order to tell this tale of a demon-possessed girl properly, we will need to start from the middle of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Indiana should be finding the lost city of Tannis as we speak. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of people working on this project. Even if it's government funded, that's a lot of people working on this project. 1970s parkour. <laughs> you see, movies, it doesn't always have to be a you'd better come take a look at this cliche. Even though the kid doesn't know exactly what they found, at least he's giving Father Marin all the information he has. I'm so pissed that other movies don't do this that I'm gonna add a sin here. Even though this movie doesn't deserve it. Hope you're happy with yourself, Hollywood. Holy sh is that Max von Cito? That guy hasn't aged a day since Minority Report. Man, this is for sure going to ruin the Brady Bunch Hawaii vacation. Look, I know this movie is a classic, and that it's trying to establish the origin of the evil that came from this Iraqi archaeological site, but it also takes the movie goddamn forever to set this up. Also, we know later that Marin makes a trip back to the States, and somehow this amulet ends up in a house being rented by a Hollywood actress that he has jack to do with. But the movie isn't interested in telling you how that shit happened. Wow, this demon has the evil power to stop a clock. I guess it's just warming up its asshole prankster muscles before it gets down to the real possession business. It's important to stretch. You don't want to pull a hammy. 70 f***ing seconds of watching Marin amble slowly out of town. Wait, where'd the sound of the falling rocks come from then? Dude's literally just standing there. You know a place is evil when it makes dogs fight each other. It's kind of like my neighbor Rick's house. Rick. Well, looks like this demon's itching for an old-fashioned staring contest, and Father No Blinks just the guy for the job. Wow, there's a weird and loud noise coming from a very specific spot in the attic. Better go immediately check on Reagan's room to see how she could possibly pull this off. Chris is acting in a movie called Crash Course, and it's about to do a scene where they're about to tear down a building at a college. I feel like once they film this scene, and only this scene, the whole movie will be done. Well, what's wrong? Well, why are they tearing the building down? Look, I'm sure script rewrites on set are pretty common, but this seems like a pretty important f***ing scene. You're telling me Chris had no idea what was happening until today? Shall we summon the writer? He's in Paris, I believe. Hiding? Absolutely nothing about what just happened in this scene makes any sense to me. First off, is what they just said that funny? Second off, can the spectators even hear this conversation? But the kids who want to get an education have a right- Man, for a movie that's so critically lauded for being one of the scariest of all time, this sucker sure does spend a lot of time on the B through G plots. And there's not a day in my life that I don't feel like a fraud. Jeez, either Chris has some miracle ears to overhear this conversation, or the clergy of this church have severe problems modulating the volume of their voices. The director said, let's have your character type while eating an apple. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. You got an invitation. What's this? Dinner at the White House. Ah, I see Richard Nixon has as big of a hard-on for Hollywood actresses as Jack Kennedy. Help an old altar boy. I'm a Catholic. Problem is, this homeless guy had him at altar boy, but lost him with Catholic. Man, the first third of this movie could just be called long tracking shots of people walking. What the f***? is a basketball goal doing here? If you actually get the ball through the hoop, doesn't the ball go downstairs into this place called the basement? And if you went after it, wouldn't you likely be killed by the swamp monster that lives down there? Little known fact, Georgetown was the number one consumer of basketballs in the 70s. Nobody knew why until now. No one will be seated during the Father Karras rewraps his mother's injured ankle portion of the movie. Jesus, I feel like the actual possession lasts like 12 minutes in this mother Captain Howdy, do you think my mom's pretty? So is the movie saying that out of all the kids in all the houses in the entire world, Pazuzu picked Reagan just because she found a f***ing Ouija board? It was all the way in Iraq. How did that f make it to D.C.? You don't like him like Daddy? While scenes like this between Chris and Reagan may seem long and drawn out, they effectively show why what's about to happen is so devastating. Most horror movies these days don't give us this dynamic with kids and their parents. The kids start seeing weird and draw a bunch of disturbing pictures in school and we're supposed to care because they're kids, man. Anyway, I'm removing a sin for this. Chris thinks she hears rats up in the attic, so the most obvious thing to do is to open that fucker up so they can race down into the living space. It's honestly like Chris has never housed before. Also, are we to believe that was seriously Captain Howdy Pazuzu up there? And if so, did it take Chris opening the attic to let him out to fuck with Reagan? What are the fucking rules of this possession, damn it? Earlier, when Chris told Carl there were rats up here, he told her this attic was clean. Now, maybe he was telling her it was clean, as in there are no rats, but this attic is far from clean. You know what they say? Demons cannot resist a pyrotechnic show before proper possession. Very sorry, but you see, no rats. No rats. Thanks a lot. So are you not the least bit concerned about what's making all the noise up here? Now that you've got confirmation there are no rats, you've got to focus your search on raccoons. And if it's not raccoons, then the next step is ghosts or demons, right? A full minute of this guy doing his flower business, just so we can see the Virgin Mary's been vandalized. Oh, that Pazuzu. Such a prankster. To the point that... Even though he has a much more important possession to get to, he still makes time for some childish jokes involving grotesque hoo-hahs and la-las. Never change, Pazuzu. Come on, I'm gonna take you out of here, Mama. This goes on for some time. Hell yeah, I can't wait for Karis vs. Pazuzu 2. I've even pre-ordered it on pay-per-view. There seems to be an alien pubic hair in my gym. Clarence Thomas. Bloody damn butchering Nazi 
pain. Is there any good movie reason why the director of Crash Course is berating this Swiss butler guy for being a Nazi? If I went around telling people the story of The Exorcist, would I leave this part in or would I take it out? And how long before the cops arrest me for rotating my head 360 degrees in a public park? What's for dessert? This alcoholic, germanophobic character unfortunately inspires the central mannerisms of Mr. Bean. This is a great party. Yeah, it don't stop. Yeah, don't worry about my little head daughter that's directly upstairs and trying to sleep. Her ass should be down here doing shots anyway. You're gonna die up there. Way to go, Reagan. Before this, Burke was the party's biggest embarrassment. Did Burke pay you to do this? Reagan? Dude, I know Chris is probably plied with alcohol and whatever awesome pills they used in the 70s, but this is a slow-ass reaction time to Reagan's weirdness. It's just like the doctor said. It's nerves. And that's all. What f***ing doctor? Sure, Reagan may have a complicated psychiatric history, but we haven't seen any of that in her character so far. She's been a happy-go-lucky kid with a bright attitude and a good relationship with her mother. Get the f*** out of here with this sudden diagnosis. Man, you put a quarter into one of these things and you just never know what to expect. Also, couldn't she, you know, get off the bed? She said this has happened before when she moved into Chris's bed, and she was clearly able to leave that time. Stealing is a sin. Haha, uh -huh, we don't take sin seriously at Georgetown. Do clergy dream of allegorical public transit? I so Reagan's possessed now, right? But not all the way possessed? Is this the period where they're trying to prevent rejection before she gets fully demonized? The whole bed was thumping and rising off the floor and shaking the whole thing. Mrs. McNeil, the problem with your daughter is not her bed. It's her brain. Well, I guess you have a point. I probably should forget about that bed shaking thing. Probably completely unrelated. Jesus, the doctors smoke too? It's like The Exorcist was funded by Marlboro. Like, what was a clue into the fragile human soul merely turned out to be a successful lobbying attempt by the tobacco industry? There's nothing there. No vascular displacement at all. But this asshole doctor still decided to go with one of the most invasive tests to confirm a baseless theory about a rare disorder in a child with no relevant medical history except some mild psychiatric issues. Jesus, I'm convinced the last five minutes of this movie was just an excuse to show us the gory details of brain imaging from the 70s. This shit seems too real, man. How come more movies haven't been able to replicate demon possession like this? Is it because this movie spoiled it for the others? Anyway, this is f***ed up enough to remove a sin. Keep away! The sow is mine! Pathological states can induce abnormal strength. Accelerated motor performance. And tell me, doctor, when was the last time you saw a patient yelling f*** me and all that you just saw? Say a 90-pound woman sees her child pinned under the wheel of a truck, runs out and lifts the wheels a half a foot up off the ground. Pretty sure this is mom shaming. Now I know the temptation to leap to psychiatry, but any reasonable psychiatrist would exhaust the somatic possibilities first. Or maybe they could lend their expertise as part of a complete differential diagnosis, instead of these bozos continuing to spout off about a temporal lobe injury that they know isn't there. Look, I'm not a doctor, and I'm sure medicine has progressed over the last 45 years, but this yada yada of the cause of Reagan's pathology is such bullshit, it's making me feel like pazuzuing myself. You keep any drugs in your house? No. He's just asking this now? I think it's time we started looking for a psychiatrist. And if he also happens to be a priest, all the better. Hello? Damn, this demon's such an asshole, he's apparently taken over all the major utilities, just so he can properly f*** with the whole family. Burke's dead. Bye-bye, Berkey. Also, sheesh, man, there are better ways of getting out of babysitting. Tell them you got jury duty, or that your mom is in a coma, or that your pet snake accidentally ate your other pet wombat. Anything. He must have been drunk. He fell down from the top of the steps right outside. For some reason, he was railing against the Third Reich and Goebbels to a mom and her son before he fell. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, right? Who has the creative wizardry to finish Crash Course now? Is there someone inside you? Sometimes. Wait, is the demon hypnotized too? Can that happen? Is he sleeping? Going out for a smoke? Like, why can't they keep Reagan in this state for a while until they've figured out what's happening? Who are you? And that's why you never sit within crotchal reach of your patients. It really is the first thing they teach you in psychiatry school. What do you know on the subject of witchcraft? One week into the investigation of the death of Burke, this detective resorts to asking priests about witchcraft, which is goddamn amazing police work, if you ask me. And this is all because they found his head turned completely around, which I grant you is unusual, but still. You got to witchcraft in one f***ing week? His head turned completely around. Didn't it happen in the fall? It's possible. I mean, yeah, right? Isn't the fact that the fall likely broke Burke's neck and that his head was turned around as a result much more likely an explanation than f***ing witchcraft? You think the killer and the desecrator are the same? Maybe somebody crazy, somebody with a spite against the church. Sure, sure. And Hollywood directors who are in no way affiliated with the church at all. You see, it's all falling into place. Yeah, I love to talk, film, you know, discuss, to critique. If we find anything, we can even call them sins. That fits your line of work, right, Father? We could form a club for cinema. A sort of cinema sins, if you will. God, that's clever. This sh wasn't found at the scene. If they thought it was murder, then they surely ran across this. And yeah, it's covered by a patch of grass now, but wouldn't a patch of grass at the bottom of the steps get searched? Especially with all those cops at the scene? Also, what the sh 
is this statue? It's not the one that Marin found in Iraq, but yet somehow is also an evil harbinger of death. And if so, why doesn't this affect Kinderman? We make it very probable that the deceased was killed and then pushed from your daughter's window. The f if there was any possibility that Burke was thrown from Reagan's window, why isn't this place crawling with cops? And when Chris drove by the death scene, it was in a completely different place. And even if this area is somehow the backside of Chris's house, why didn't she react at all seeing that crazy scene outside? This doesn't make a lick of goddamn sense. He wouldn't have any reason in the world to go up to her. Except that he was technically babysitting while Sharon went out to get the meds, right? Jesus Christ, does anyone understand this plot besides the possession parts? You're a very nice lady. Nice man. Glad these two people from a mainstream movie in 1973 can reaffirm their binary existence. Get with the program, Hollywood. Jeez. In one of the movie's most disturbing scenes, where demon-possessed Reagan is stabbing herself with a cross, I've just gotta wonder, how did she get the cross back? Just as the detective came to talk to her, Chris put the cross down on the end table. Surely you're not telling me the fucking demon came down and brought the cross back, right? Holy Do you know what she did? Yuck. Well, apparently she learned the Queen's English, considering this accent. Also, let's go back to this scene for a second. This demon, who has thrown a man out the window and down some steps, managed to supernaturally move this chair and close the door. Then made this dresser come tumbling after Chris right after. But then he let her go? Sometimes this movie's abrupt editing works. In this case, I demand answers. How did they get an exorcism? Well, the first thing, I'd have to get him into a time machine and get him back to the 16th century. Ah, oh, Jesus. These two have been doing their walk and exposit for the last almost three minutes. And we're still dicking around the point of this conversation. Why'd Karis even agree to meet Chris here in the first place? Why all the subterfuge at all? Since we learned about mental illness, paranoia, schizophrenia, all those things they taught me at Harvard. Oh yes, didn't I mention I went to Harvard? Secondly, the church, before it approves an exorcism, conducts an investigation to see if it's warranted. That takes time. Just a minute ago, you said that the church hasn't done an exorcism since the 16th century. Now you're telling her the procedure for how the church decides to do an exorcism, as if they do this all the time. The movie does say that the church doesn't want to advertise this service, and this guy is losing his faith, so he might not care, but how do you jump from exorcisms haven't been done in forever to, well, if you wanted one, it takes a lot of work to greenlight it. Your mother sit here with his cars. Would you like to leave a message? Sure, Pazuzu's a dick and a demon and all, but does it know everything about everyone? Karis hasn't even been tangentially associated with this case, so Demon Reagan hasn't met him before. And he even tricks this motherfucker by asking about her maiden name. I'm just saying this shit's creepy enough without the weird specificity. If that's true, then you must know my mother's maiden name. What is it? What is it? It's so much prettier in the original Greek, though. Damn our American pronunciations. Dude, I know we got dirty from the pea soup vomit, but does Chris really need to iron Karis' f***ing sweater? What an excellent day for an exorcism. Man, this demon sure does know a lot about stuff. He's like an encyclopedia satanica. What's that? F***ing seriously? Even if this is fake, wouldn't Pazuzu know what holy water's used for? It burns! What the hell, man? This causes Captain Howdy to writhe in pain and speak in that backward language, which ultimately exposes the truth about the possession. But it's not even real holy water. So again, I say, what the hell, man? Huh? Oh, come on. Guy's listening to a powerful demon talk on a tape. And the phone is what's scary? It's funny to me that in the movie world, phones are some unexpectedly loud, scary bullshit. Oh, what's wrong? What is it? Sharon didn't tell Karius what was going on until now, even though he came all the way out here. You would want to do the exorcism yourself. Yeah, that was easy. I mean, Karius went with nothing but his testimony and his uneducated opinion. Didn't he just tell Chris that it was nearly impossible to get approval without hard evidence? This sh escalated quickly. What about the exorcist? Roll devils! He's at Woodstock now. What's he doing there? Teaching? I don't know, but I bet it involves some bitch and drugs. Damn, Billy Friedkin must have worn that cross dissolve button out for this movie. Needlepoint? Needlepoint? Look, I know Chris is trying to distract herself and everything, but is there any probable scenario in which she would be able to concentrate on needlepoint during a f***ing exorcism? While this is just a simple reading from what amounts to an exorcist manual, it's one of the most intense scenes in movie history. There aren't any big showy moments, just the confident reading of one Max von f***ing Cedar. Our oh, Father, who oh, art in heaven. Damn, for a demon-possessed little girl, she's got excellent Lukey aim. Um, your mother sucks sh and hell, oh, Karis. Rhetoric. Listen, if she's gonna be bedridden for a while, it is important to stretch as much as possible. Pazuzu can make an entire building shake, but apparently can't get Reagan out of f***ing bed. The power of Christ compels you! Dude, however much this scene has been parodied, it's tense as f and I must remove a sin for how awesome it is. Is she gonna die? No. Not if I have anything to die about it. <laughs> ah, the phone! Jesus. <sighs> f***ing scared me. Oh, wait, that was a doorbell. Doorbells aren't scary. Phones are scary. Oh, wow, Pazuzu killed Marin. How, you may ask? Especially considering he's had the upper hand this entire process? F*** you, says movie. I'm scary. This attempt at pounding a man's chest to revive him is definitely the work of a guy who went to Harvard, Bellevue, and Johns Hopkins. 
Also, now that he's dead, I think it's appropriate to ask, what the f*** was all that at the beginning of the movie? It introduced us to Father Marin, sure, but how did he end up taking his evil amulet statue combo that he obviously knew was evil all the way to the States? Or did it get stolen? Tell me more about how all the evil sh got in this house. Dude, there's been a lot of sh going on here for several hours, but just now the detective shows up? Damn, this is going to take a lot of paperwork, since the detective didn't see Karis throw himself out the window. How do you explain this without also including excerpts from occult books from the library? Or do you just charge Reagan with murder? Look, I understand this is tragic, but this just happened, and DC is a big f***ing city. You're telling me everyone got here at a moment's notice? Wait a minute, how the hell did anybody get thrown from that window directly down those stairs if the window is to the right of the stairwell? It also looks like a pretty long distance, like it would require a catapult to even get close to it. You go to hell! You go to hell and you die! How can a dumb old piece of wood give you bad luck? Unless it hits you in the head. <laughs> anyway, I don't think I want it anymore. That's dumb. You want it? Sure, why not? It'll make a great souvenir. And all young players and pimps right now is the place to be. Nice dissolve. I can smell your cut. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. I tell you, Christ, I don't even smoke grass. Everybody lies. On your left. I've never met one priest who has performed an exorcism. Not one. Yeah, well. I need an old priest and a young priest. There is no being a only soul. What a lovely singing voice you must have. <laughs>